Welcome to our community. Susie Thomas here with you this morning. Really happy to be welcoming Jeff Kahn and Ken Groves from the Amish Country Theater. And George hey. joins us as well. Good morning to all three of you. Hey, Good thanks morning. for being here. Good morning. Hey, how you doing, huh? <laughs> we should explain that George is uh, careful what, now. one careful. of the stars Thank of you. Amish Country Theater. Thank you so much. For voiced that. by Ken Groves. Yes. Who? who? Way, <laughs> way better than Edgar Bergen because Ken's <laughs> lips do not move while George is speaking. Have you noticed that, George? I, I noticed. If his lips are moving, he's lying, okay? <laughs> it's that easy. That's how you yeah. tell. Did you ever think of running for office, Ken? Kidding. <laughs> it's a joke. Okay, um, uh, maybe we should let you guys do the jokes. Uh, tell us a little bit about Amish Country Theater. Well, the Amish Country Theater, we are down in Walnut Creek, Ohio, so right in the heart of Ohio's Amish Country, and we are going on our fifth season. We're a live family variety show, so kind of a lot like Hee Haw on TV, if you remember that. We've got bluegrass bands, funny characters, comedians. Ken Groves, who's here with us today, is a ventriloquist. He's a big draw. Uh, he's got all sorts of funny characters that he brings with him, so George is here with us today. So, which is good because George sleeps in usually. So, <laughs> it's nice that you're here this morning, George. Oh, well, thank you. We just came back from the convention, the ventriloquist convention, and I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I want to get back to the ventriloquist convention because who knew there was yeah. something like that? Five years ago, how did this get going? So, who was sitting around saying, you know what we need in Amish country is a hee haw show? Absolutely. We started five years ago. It was a family business. Um, you know, this wasn't a big company that came into town and opened up a big show. Uh, you know, our family, five years ago, we always loved acting and performance and technology and production. And we knew there was a need for it in the evening. There wasn't a big, uh, a big amount to do in Amish country after the shops closed, the restaurants Nothing closed. Nothing to do. <laughs> yeah. George got bored after five, so we opened up a show um, for the tourists and a lot of locals too. You know, a lot of people from Canton's a great market for us. Even Holmes County locally uh, come out and enjoy these shows because it's nice, fun, clean evening entertainment that you can bring your family to. So, that's so how this really started. was in response to people coming. It really, it's a destination place. Right, right, Amish country right. certainly is to do the shopping and the restaurants. But I did hear from rest from uh, hotel owners mm -hmm. saying, then they ask us, "Hey, what's to do tonight?" And they'd say, "You know, sleep yeah, and right. get ready for tomorrow." Yep. But uh, so this was in response to something like that. Now, uh, Jeff, how did you hook up with Ken here? All right. Well, we had it was our second season in our off season. And when our uh, house show isn't running, we bring in special acts, whether it's different bands or gospel groups or comedians. And we knew about Ken. I uh, had never personally met him. So this was back in, what, 2013, Ken? 12 or 13. 12 and 13. So we had Ken out for a show. And we promoted it. It sold out. People just loved Ken, mm -hmm. what he did at the theater. And um, we talked after that. Ken can tell you more on his end how he ended up. But yeah. from our end, we were thrilled to be able to offer him you know, a permanent uh, position at the theater. And it's been awesome Thank ever since. Thank you. <laughs> and George. Work. I'm sorry, Thank George. Thank you. I was so sick of flying <laughs> and being on a cruise ship. Thank you. <laughs> well, let's get into your career because it's what? a good one. Uh, George, excuse me. I know it's your career as well. But Ken, tell me a little bit about really the interesting life you have led. Uh, it's a little amazing, I think considering I never really tried, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it, go back. How did just, you get in interested in ventriloquism in the first place? Uh, I saw it at a school show, and then we'd go over to my grandmother's house. She had a TV. We didn't. Now, we're going. We're back in the 60s. Yeah, Not everybody right. Everybody had TVs in the 60s. Yes. You know. They weren't carrying them around in right. the palms exactly. of their hands. And we'd go to Grandma's house and watch, uh, you know, uh, variety TV in the 60s. Always had a ventriloquist on it, and it was great to see that. And then one came to our school show or to our school and did a show and i thought well, that's what i want to do were you self-taught how does a person yes. learn Th how back to do then this? there was only three books on the subject and um i read the three books and i took a little bit out of this one a little bit out of that one a little bit out of this one put it all together and i have a god-given gift i can do it mm -hmm. i could just do it from yes almost day one and then it was just getting all the little side pieces to make them all work together because talking without moving your lips that's really the easy part 
every angry mother can do it. You're yeah. right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly – it's true. Come to think of it, yes. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, but then you've got to be able to manipulate the puppet. You've got to have the, the mouth of the puppet in sync with what you're saying. The puppet has to act and react to what you do, even though it's not alive. You've mm-hmm. got to make it look alive. You forget yeah. that. Because even just here, sitting here, right. I think it's almost natural for you. It's it innate. I, I He's continuing to right. move and react to everything we're saying. He's a person sitting here. Right. And if I don't believe he's real, the audience will not believe he's real. Right. How do you give them each a different personality? That's another hard part of the puzzle you have to be able to put together. And it takes a lot of study. Like my old man character, Howard, he's 93. I studied old people for years, yeah. watched how they moved, what they said, the way they did things. And then I just bring it out through him. Does someone's voice accidentally come out when you're doing a different puppet? No, because as soon as I say their name, they remind me of a real life person. And that real life person's here. Mm-hmm. And all of my characters are based on, well, except for Cecil. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, he's actually based on my son-in-law. The, vo- <laughs> the, the, the voice. He's a chicken. Does your no, son-in-law no, no, no. know him? No, no he, he's uh, from Argentina. Uh-huh. And so he has this uh, yeah. accent, you know. Oh. And, <laughs> you know, hey, so good to see you. you know? <laughs> and so that's Cecil, and it's based on my son-in-law. Mm-hmm. Um, and so all of them are based on a real-life person. And that way, when I think of Cecil, I think of my son-in-law. When I think of George, it's an old friend of mine that was just a serious redneck. (laughs) Your act is so fun and so seemingly spontaneous. How much improv goes into Mm. that and how much is scripted and practiced? Uh, All of my act is scripted. Mm -hmm. But I can go off at any time, do some improv and that, uh, some ad-libbing, and then come back to it. But, you know, at the theater, time is very important. And we say, okay, we're doing this bit, and it's 12 minutes. So if I'm into my thing, I do a little improv, a little ad-libbing, I have to keep an eye on the time and go, okay, we used four minutes for that, so let's cut four minutes on this end. And you're doing all that thinking in your head where they're talking. Wow. (laughs) Yeah, you've got about ten different things going on at once. People don't realize because Mm, you make it look effortless, and it's fun, and it always seems fresh. It's always like it's the first time you're doing it. Right, and it only took me 32 years to make it look that way. Well, there you go. (laughs) Yeah. And, Jeff, tell us now Mm -hmm. a little more because we know we look forward to seeing Ken. Ken, you're in every show? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, with uh, pretty right. much, uh-huh. yeah. unless he's like on his back sick or, or at dead. the National Ventriloquist <laughs> Convention. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I want to get back to that, too. Okay. But uh, but what else can we yeah. look forward to then? Well, at the shows, uh, we've got a multitude of characters. One, probably the next biggest character is Leonard. Mm-hmm. And Leonard's kind of that spotlight steal. No, Leonard's the star. Leonard's the star. He would tell you he is the self-proclaimed star of the show. Uh-huh. And, uh, he kind of drinks the... a lot, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's Leonard. The, uh, the spotlight stealing country bumpkin right. who's always interrupting Ken and George or barging into the room with right. some crazy um, act that he's doing. And you um, never know how he's coming into the room. <laughs> It might be on a unicycle. It might be on a tricycle. It might be on a, you know, who knows? you got to watch it. Yeah, we, we won't spoil the surprise yeah, right. of this year, okay. but it is always a hoot to see how Leonard enters the show each year because oh, it gets fun. crazier and crazier. But, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Audience response mm-hmm. to this mm-hmm. has been, tell us. It's incredible. Yeah. You know, we do a lot of marketing and advertising, but far and above the best advertising we do is word of mouth. We hear time after time, almost every show, that someone was here a couple months ago and they brought eight of their family members or their church group or their Sunday school class or senior center or um, whole families are chartering buses now to come out for their reunions or celebrating anniversaries. So um, the response was way bigger than we ever thought it would be. Mm -hmm. When we started, we thought it would be, you know, just a couple shows in the weekends and we put up a couple chairs, but now there's a state-of-the-art theater. Um, we're expanding. You know, a lot of that news is coming real soon. Um, so the response has been overwhelming. And it's really fun to see. We had one or two red hats come. You know, the red hats. Oh, society. the red hat society. I certainly yes. do. We had one or two of those come two years ago, yeah. and now they bring busloads. Oh, wow. <laughs> There's nothing better than a room full of red hatters. That's right. <laughs> they go crazy. There's Now, there is something different about performing when it is a family-friendly, mm-hmm. everybody is just there happy, ready mm-hmm. to laugh, dying to laugh, mm-hmm. because they, they are so starved of clean, funny right. entertainment. Right. What's the difference between performing for this kind of a group and performing, say, in some of the other groups that you've performed for? Well, 
the, the, the mm, how do I say this without getting in trouble? <laughs> Just say it. Okay. We're all friends well, here. Well, here's the thing. A lot of our groups that we perform for come from churches, comes from uh, that type of conservative thing. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times you're up there doing your show and you can see them sitting there going, how does he mean that? What's he <laughs> mean by that? And they're trying to wonder how to take it. Uh-huh. Where other groups I go out and perform for, they don't care what I say. They don't care what I do. They don't worry about that. They're not sitting there in judgment. Is this clean? Is this dirty? Is this mm-hmm. how? They don't have that. Where a lot of our groups do that. That's and, interesting. Yeah, and it and we've had people come up to us and go, "What did you mean by that?" And we're going, "What? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what? <laughs> How'd you come up with that? You know?" Uh, they, do you, you think know. that's because there is such a oh onslaught of unclean Mm -hmm. humor out there right now that for a Christian audience, you are looking to use discernment because you do want to be careful what you're feeding your spirit. And so do you think we maybe have our antennas up too high when we go into something that is tailored right for us to be clean entertainment? Well, I think a lot of people should sit there at at the show, Mm -hmm. watch the show, and as an overall go, hmm, okay. But a lot of them are dissecting every word. Wow. And then they're not enjoying well, the show. Well, that's not fun. Yeah, they're not enjoying the show. They're sitting there with that look like, okay, how does he mean that? Mm-hmm. And we have some people that get all upset over stuff that we kind of look at each other and go, what? That's very I mean, You really got to be we're stretching a long way mm-hmm, to make mm-hmm. this, you know. Read something into it that was not right, there. Right, exactly, exactly. And you're thinking, man, yeah. you got your antennas up that high, that strong. That, well, there's mm-hmm. such a stereotype, I think, with comedy that is not going to be clean. Yes. You, know, I mean, you think any, that's what it is? Well, I just think when you think comedy, you worry about that sometimes yeah. just because you never know. So what we try to do when we write our shows, because everything we do is uh, written by us. Right. Mm-hmm. So we try to say, you know, here's where we think the line would be for as far as like what a clean Right. show would be and then we take about three steps back uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> because you know everybody has a different opinion of what is clean what's exactly. family friendly exactly so we try not to even just flirt with the line and you know just inevitably you there. might have a couple people where their yeah. line might be you know 100 yeah. yards out of the and where and we think it should I be but it surprises us well, so yeah. much when people walk up to us and say something because like yeah. jeff said we here's the line let's back up three steps mm-hmm. and then they come up and go hey well, <laughs> but overall the show in yeah. in general is we like to put people at ease we say look it's a clean show. It's we we say it's rated PG. I was just going to say, yeah. what would you rate it? We rate it PG. It's not a G show, uh-huh. but it's a PG show. So if you're okay with that, like on a TV or on a movie, you're going to be okay with the and, show. And there are some things that we say that the adults get, mm-hmm. and it's over the kid's head. Same with Bugs Bunny. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so some people go, oh, I don't know if you should say that with kids. But the thing is, they have to look at it like a Bugs Bunny cartoon mm-hmm. where we got to do stuff, some stuff for the adults. Or they're going to be sitting there going, oh, it's a kiddie show. But uh-huh, it's not. Uh-huh. No. Uh, it's a we, family we, show. We, we try it all together. Mm-hmm. That and, kind and of some f- people can't, re- can't read that or, or understand that, I guess. I don't mm-hmm. know. They're looking for. That know. does fly in the face of to the pure all is pure. Because mm-hmm. can't we read humor and take see it through those pure innocent eyes and enjoy the humor and have a good laugh Mm -hmm. i have heard i've read that true humor uh, laughter produces an enzyme and i shouldn't be talking about things i don't know that much about but there is an enzyme that's produced in our minds Mm -hmm. that is healing which absolutely goes with scripture Right. right the laughter is such a good medicine it is when we laugh because of shock or something dirty that same enzyme is not produced, right. I have read. That Correct. you're just laughing in response as something shocking. Right. So that kind of humor is not even healthy, mm-hmm. whereas the kind of humor you are doing mm-hmm. is healthy. Right. Well, enough people must be loving it because it's so popular. <laughs> yeah, and our, and our crowds are growing. Jeff knows the numbers. I just know they're growing, you know? <laughs> yeah, they are. Jeff, can tell what, you down to yeah. the percentage. <laughs> we want to know. What they is that are. percentage, well, Jeff? I think one of the best – a couple compliments we get from, you know, the best compliment is going to be the um, – kind of the reviews that people leave. We've won our – just recently, the – fourth year in a row or TripAdvisor Certificate of Excellence where basically just travelers go online and review our show and it's the fourth straight year that you know TripAdvisor has a certain threshold that once you reach that you win the certificate so that's our fourth year and then recently too uh, we were rated a top 100 event in America 
by the American Bus Association, which has been huge for us. We do so many groups, special occasions. So, um, yeah, it's like I said, it's grown more than we ever thought it would. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. It was the next thing I want to ask yeah. you about. We've got to take a break. We'll okay. be back after these words. You're listening to our community.